Warriors. Let's have a great week. How's everyone doing? Hello, Zig. Umar. Teresa, how are you? Hope everyone had a great weekend. And all the women that have children had a nice Mother's Day. Constantine, Leon, Mark Hinman, how are you? Everyone doing okay? Yeah, it's the Pinkster. Hello, Hamid. Okay, so we all know after the close Friday that negotiations broke down between Washington and Beijing. And we now have uh, S&Ps down 42 handles. So uh, Blake talked about, you know, having a major binary event. Uh, what's interesting to me is not just that the, uh, you know, it's kind of expected that the S&Ps would do this. But you know what's surprising to me, and I went with it last night because it was showing some relative strength, was what crude did. Since, you know, they're pretty tightly correlated, thought it might be a breakout here, but maybe not. Maybe I need to adjust my line here now and just make it an ascending triangle instead of a symmetrical and just draw it off this line at the last major high, meaning that we need 62.80 for it to break out. But anyway, uh, excellent performance by crude in light of pressure of risk off here. Uh, it, so it makes me think that if crude could perform in a risk off environment, what would happen during a rebound in equities? And I'm not saying it's going to happen. It just that's the kind of question I ask myself. If something isn't doing what it should be or normally does with outside markets that affect it, what's going to happen if that type of negative energy dissipates? So that's what I'm asking myself in crude. Uh, something else that surprised me, and I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but with S&Ps down this much, uh, a bit surprised we haven't taken out the double bottom in U.S. dollar yen. Uh, I would have thought we would have been under here with this type of action in S&P. So I guess the point being, uh, uh, normally, <clears throat> you know, the expectation would have been, you know, new lows in U.S. dollar yen with what's happening in equities, and it isn't. So potentially there's still a rally left in U.S. dollar yen for better shorts. And uh, of course, we are getting rates moving lower on this happening. Uh, not, you know, pretty good. I mean, down almost five basis points on the uh, tenure, but we are diverging a little bit under here on the one hour and the four. You know, it's trying to dig its heels in here. Uh, but, you know, it may, it's still a higher low. Okay. We still have a higher low. So yields are higher, even though the S&Ps uh, uh, are lower than they were at the end of March. So, you know, it's still as possible we get some type of ABC. I really can't turn bullish either the yen or yields until we get this low being taken out here. And I think let just could draw a line here on yields and see where a third drive might come in. Although, you know, guys, you've noticed with me talking about these wedge lines on three drives and the team talks about them, too. They're called throwovers that if you're trading the line, it, it makes you want to throw up. But uh, this line's going to come in right around two and a quarter. And we'll see what kind of RSI reading we have should that occur. Uh, looking at FX, cable doesn't look bad. Okay, he had a nice little pop here. You know, still holding the moving average here. Uh, I can't really get bearish in uh, uh, Euro yet. You know, we start closing back over this moving average. The only negative thing I could see in Euro right here is that we may end up with some type of three drive pattern up here at this major resistance at a previous high, which is this high. So right now it looks like a one, two, maybe we get a three up here after some kind of stop hunt. And then something else that's uh, getting close to a probe would be this uh, Aussie. 
you already have two and we're going for a three and it looks like it's going to come in around 69.30. I don't think RSI is going to blow out the divergence here. So before I hand this over, uh, I want to check out a few things with you face warriors here that come into our community here. How many have been trading for four years or longer? Yeah, it could be the Iran factor, Hamid. It, it, it could be, uh, don't forget, Venezuela is also on the front burner. That's a, that, could, that could be a supply issue. But yeah, it's really uh, heating up. Um, a lot of things are heating up around the, in the Persian Gulf right now, so that's a possibility. Okay. Uh, anyone else in here has been trading four years? FX Glenn, you're a survivor. You've been trading for four years. Okay. Uh, you need to take your time. Uh, Rick, four years plus, you're a survivor. Okay, so we have some survivors in here. Okay. Oh, 10, 4, Scott, 10, you're a survivor. Ping pong. Look at that. We have a we have a room full of survivors. That's excellent. Okay. You guys need to pat yourself on the back that you're still doing it. You're not only a survivor, okay, you're also a maverick, but a survivor. And I hope you've turned from a survivor AS to a thriver. Anyone in here? Ziggy started yesterday. <laughs> what should I buy? Which way euro, Ziggy? Up or down? All right. So then you turn from a survivor to a thriver. Okay. Who's ever lost a job and found another? Anyone in here? I'm I'm raising my hand. You know, during the Bataan Death March in the financial services industry. Okay. All right, Claudia, you're a survivor. Okay, it's, it's a good thing to be a survivor. It shows your strength. Okay, anyone ever go through a divorce or have a, an illness that was very difficult? Live with pain, chronic, stuff like that? Hammett, you? Ping pong? Okay, you're a survivor, Hammett. Anyone ever uh, been in their nation's armed services and been assigned to a combat zone? Hey, Coach, uh, I'm sorry. You uh, uh, a headline just came out: China to raise tariffs on U.S. products. So okay. just letting you know. All right. That well, that's what's you know what? That was my in. segue. That was my segue into you, anyway. You're well, a survivor. Okay. Uh, uh, so yeah, the 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 headline just came out that um, that that China is going to what a mess. Uh, raise tariffs. Hold on, let me grab everything. Sorry. What do we even sell to them? What do they buy from us? Uh, I don't know, but it's uh, it's, Agriculture. A it's a retaliation type of yeah. effort. Yeah. So let me pull over the charts. Hold on. Okay, buddy. Uh, the dollar yen is is now approaching um, pretty key support. Yeah, yeah. Now it's going for it. The yeah, U.S. It by the way, the U.S. does export aircraft, soybeans, vehicles, chips, and stuff like that. So, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, what do you have? Do you have a list of other other items too, Stelios, that might uh, be of interest to 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 people? I mean, the dollar yen is going for this really key level support at 109.50, and um, if if you uh, if you watch the week ahead video, this is um, the level, obviously, that uh, that everybody needs to be watching as we as we approach it. So um, I'm sorry, Stelios, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no please go ahead. Oh, go wait, ahead. wait, wait. They're, they're saying China to raise tariffs on how many billions? Sorry, I'm trying to keep an eye on all these headlines here. Uh, tariffs on 2,493 U.S. goods to 25 percent. Well, that doesn't help us. I mean, 2,900 and whatever goods. What's the, the dollar value of them? <laughs> but yeah, okay. Forty-two uh, dollars. Um, so, um, <laughs> wow. Um, Sixty billion of U.S. goods there. Gold's coming back. Uh, June first. Yeah. So. 
so that the, those are the headlines that are coming out right now. And let's take a look at a little bit closer view of the dollar yen. So this is, you can see how very important this support is. Um, so what I would do here is put the horizontal ray right here. And yeah. this is where you want to get kind of worried. So uh, I think it comes in at 46, Blake. Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, yep, yeah, right around 46. So uh, that's the price. That's what we. Uh, that's what we need to be looking at. Um, I don't. You know, I don't know if we're going to break it just yet. I think. Uh, but look at the S and P's. They are just really uh, falling pretty aggressively here. So um, we're seeing a pretty good, pretty good move down in the in the spoos, and I would assume that eventually it's going to weigh in on the um, on the yen and one of the other one of the other things is uh is the Aussie dollar is taking really taking a hit right now too so you know it, this is this is a uh, risk aversion you know at its finest and it's, it's really you warned it, you warned about it Friday Blake yeah this and, could you know, on the, the week ahead video I think uh you know we, we we discussed uh dis discussed a lot of this and you know this is um kind of the world we live in now so uh, question is, you know, how far are things going to go here? Let's uh, take a look at the, you can see here's the Aussie Yen. Uh, Aussie Yen took out some support. Um, let's go over to the Aussie. Well, here, here to take a look at the S&P. The S&P, you know, I guess the S&P is, uh, you look at the dollar Yen and the S&P, they're pretty much running hand in hand at this moment in time. Uh, let's take a look at the Aussie. There's the Aussie. I mean, maybe Stell knows. Stell, uh, do you know um, how broad Smoot Hawley was in the 30s? I know China wasn't a you know a power then. I'm not sure who the trade war was with in the 30s. Uh, uh, any similarities? Because people are saying, well, it's different this time because we have you know it's a modern economy, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, isn't it possible? I mean, that's really what uh, deepened the depression was the trade war. Um, do you know anything historically about it that could be an analog to what's happening here? Or anyone know? I'm afraid I don't, although I don't. The, econom the economic world has changed massively since then, given that uh, services dominate everything now, right? So That's true. Uh, um, but no, I don't, I'm afraid. Sorry. Okay. All right. That'd be something interesting to look at you know how history rhymes yeah. doesn't always repeat but rhymes so anyway well it's an I, I you know it's not a positive that's all i could say no and you know we we discussed this on we i think we discussed this on friday i mean politically this you know this this all you know makes sense and i know i talked about it over the week ahead video it's it's you know it's a situation where you know uh, trump i think is going to play the uh the hard on china card and he's not going to back back off and, and he's going to use that as a as as a uh, as a means of um being able to uh to combat his uh, his political opponents going in 2020 and, and I think we did talk about this actually a little bit on Thursday but uh, I can only anticipate that this is going to precipitously get worse um, watch this dollar yen uh, these stops below uh, these lows here we go through 50 I mean we should uh, we should trade down a, oh here we go there we go we are now um, breaking down so there goes the uh, the dollar yen uh, taking out the stops, and here we go. And they're selling dollars across the board. I mean, look at the dollar index. You know, dollar index is really getting hammered here. So dollar yen, uh, we got the cable that's actually rallying right now. Um, the euro dollar, which is uh, which is rallying here. There's the euro. There's the pound. Uh, let's see how far these stops can take. They can take these stops in the dollar yen. Um, I'm short some dollar yen, by the way. So just letting you guys know, uh, 108.91, I guess, is where we're we're looking at. So, and 
Oh man, equities are just getting smoked here. Wow. Wow. Dollar yen is just getting wrecked. Wow. 38. Let's see. If we can take 127% extension of this range, see where that takes us. Uh, uh, that'll be 109.31. So I'm going to take my dollar yen off here. Took some profits really quick. I think we're going to find a little bit of support. I'm going to sell another rally back at 40. So I just took, I don't know, 20 some odd pips off of the market here. We go, we're at the 127% extension right now. Uh, I don't know. Oops, let me go ahead. and. So here we hit the 127% extension of that, that extension or that range. Um, we should bounce, but I, I'm going to sell any rally now until four to 40, 40, 42, you know, somewhere around there. So that was just a quick little gain. Um, now let's see if we can get some sort of bounce. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm from an intraday perspective. This is what I'm looking to do now. Just so you guys are aware. Sorry, I, I didn't, uh, you, you know, usually I don't get an opportunity to actually trade while I'm on the webinar with you guys, but, uh, but I'm doing that if Stell any news on why crude is bucking the risk off trend today? Is it Iran? Uh, no, I mean crude started rising just after the uh, the China story broke out. So and it's still rising. It's weird, yeah. huh? Yeah. I don't get it. It should be in line with uh, equities right. or theoretically in the same direction, let's say. Right. Uh, but um, no, I'm not seeing anything. So. Okay. Another question I can't ask. Wow. I can't answer. Uh, sorry. Maybe the next one. <laughs> <laughs> You're my go-to guy for fundamentals here. I mean, this, the, this dollar yen is just getting absolutely smoked. I thought I'd be uh, kind of cute and smart by trying to take some profits here at the 127% extension. It looks like we're going to the 161% extension, which is 109.10. Oh, my gosh. Just getting destroyed right now. Wow. So the gold uh, perking up, it was lower. Should be yeah, the yeah, falling. gold is definitely yeah. perking up. Um, that's gonna, that's gonna, um, you know. So uh, we could add one in with yen yeah. strength. Damn so it. when Black Monday comes, uh, Steely Dan. No, that was Black Friday. How about in a New York minute, everything can change by the Eagles? Yeah, yeah. I mean, really, it, it does. Um, you know, and I was looking at the cable, we, you know, Chi in our chat room was like, oh, the cable's outperforming this morning. And I'm like, yeah, it is. It looks pretty good. And then all of a sudden it's like, whoop, you know, here we go. I mean, but, but obviously this is, this dollar weakness is coming through, um, all from, you know, this China retaliation with their raise in tariffs. And the, the, the problem that we have here at this point is that the dollar is getting hit uh, it, you know, with the trade war across the board, which, you know, in, in, in the past, if you think about, you know, a year or two ago, um, the dollar would strengthen, um, as a trade war intensified, we're seeing opposite of that right now. Yeah. We talked about that last week. Like, remember we were saying, you know, where's the bid in the dollar when we had S and P's down 30 handles, right. three yeah. separate days. It just wasn't there. So, um, you know, it could, what could get really ugly is, you know, if the bond market really starts to rally here, you know, if we start start to see bonds uh, uh, rip higher, this could get really ugly, oh, by, you know. By the by, the way, a friend Costas is just saying that there was apparently an attack or alleged attack on some tanker ships somewhere. So maybe that's what. Uh, yeah, that could be I'm doing it. And yeah. look what Joseph Nicholas is tweeting about from the China Global Times. That's pretty interesting, too. The threat of dumping treasuries. Yeah. Oh, uh, interesting. I mean, they can, they can say that all they want, but, you know, the rest of the world will be running towards U.S. treasuries, you know, for safety. So, 
I still want to sell dollar yen on rallies, even though we're we're um, we're, we're stabilizing here in the dollar yen. And you can't. I'm not going to sit here and say, well, I'm going to buy it. You know, a lot of. And let me let me let me uh, point that out really quick. A lot of people, when you know, if I say something like this, um, well, I don't want to short it down here. The 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 next question that most traders ask is, well, why don't you buy it? And, and that is a really, you know, that's something that I want everybody to think about that concept. There are traders out there that, that can trade both sides of the market and do well. I have never been one of those people. I'm a directional trader. So if I'm bearish the US dollar Japanese yen, that means I'm only going to be selling rallies. I'm not going to be trading both sides. Um, and what I found is there are very, only very few people that can actually trade both sides of the market effectively. And um, and I'm not one of them. And I'm, I'm going to admit to you guys that I'm not one of them. Uh, and and, and the, I would say 95% of the time you won't catch me on both sides of the market, I, you know, unless I know we are specifically in a range and I'm, you know, just trading inside of a range. Most of the time I'm pretty directional. So therefore, like uh, in the dollar yen, I'm like, okay, well, I'm bearish. So I am only looking to sell rallies now. I'm not looking to play it on the long side. I'm only looking to to, to, to sell rallies and I would say for probably a majority of you people and I'm talking about you at home um, you're gonna end up being more effective just being directional and so that that is uh, that's you know how I feel about the dollar and I because I wanted to automatically head that question off at the at the pass well, why don't you buy dollar yen? No, I'm not buying it I'm just selling it and I'm looking to sell rallies and right now we are you know we're at 35 um, like I said, I, I'm waiting for a move above 40 and I'm going to start selling some. So if I can get it, uh, this morning, we'll see if we see if we can, but pretty, uh, pretty interesting news to, uh, to start us off today. I didn't expect, uh, to be, um, faced with this type of volatility as we came on to the, uh, the face webinar, which excuse me, doesn't happen often and they try to catch me off guard when I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of trying to yawn here on a Monday morning. So, um, uh, one of the things that, uh, that I talked about, um, how, how many of you, how many of you at home, and I'm asking you guys this at home, how many of you watched the week ahead video, uh, over the weekend? Scott did, uh, uh, Glenn, um, uh, Gary, uh, Umer, Forex Gal did great. Okay, and, and a lot of you guys did great. Great, Chad did, um, and and thank you all for answering. Uh, the the one thing that we had to be watching over, and if you saw it on Friday, this is a pretty big, pretty big deal. You look at the U.S. dollar CNH. This is uh, we talked about the 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 one, and look at how strong it is. And this this really should have been a clue to us today that stocks were really going to come under pressure. This is how China is really um, combating that. And and I I was wa waiting for the move above the 618 retracement. Um, and I, when I got up this morning, I'm like, oh, we are above the 618 retracement. And I was thinking to myself, this market's going to turn south. I know we were already down, but I'm like, this market is going to turn south aggressively at some point today. And then, voila, here comes the headline that really turned us lower. So we, we've, we've got to watch this. The the US dollar uh, CNH, the, the Remimbi, or the I Juan. Have admit, what, I have to admit, what? Blake, that this move in the US CNH from a fundamental perspective, not from a technical perspective, because I was looking at the same thing you're looking on the chart. So a break up, a break higher, you know, was... Uh, from a technical perspective, you know, expected. But from, from a fundamental perspective, it really baffles me. I mean, yes, by devaluing their currency, in essence, what they do is they nullify the effect of the tariffs. Okay, fine. But by devaluing your currency as, as a country, that's not the only effect you have. I mean, you know, you're losing purchasing uh, power, which, you know, it's not... It's not that China and the U.S. are in an isolation, just two countries on the whole planet. And, you know, uh, what happens, it just affects, you know, the trade between the two of them. 
So I don't really understand that. Yeah, I you know I think the I think well you know they they weigh the the way they weigh the um the 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 risks right like uh, uh, China is more of a, a net exporter of maybe or net importer of 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 uh, maybe energy and and a few other things but but mostly they're a net exporter so you know after the dust settles you know are they going to be better off with a weaker currency or a stronger currency they're probably thinking yes, but the weaker this, one. this way in essence they take away the possibility for their own citizens to become consumer of what they actually manufacture. But they've, made great, but they've made great yeah. strides in the last 30 years, Steve. I mean, it's, yes, they would make even even more if they could actually consume the products they produce because, you know, uh, what they paid uh, with has uh, more value. So, you know, it's uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's it's a big discussion. I know. Steve, you, uh, sorry, yeah. I was just going to say, you know, when they devalue the currency, their own products get less affected, right? They, the purchasing power of their own products. Right, they is, can buy their own products. Yes, of course. Look at, look at the trade balance of China and the US. US has been consistently negative for years and years, and China has been consistently, consistently positive. So they they are exporters, the others are import, you know, China are exporting, so it will hurt, I think it will hurt more the US, this this whole trade war. But you're right, Steve, but I think to a much lesser, lesser extent, you know, the, the, the home uh, produced products are gonna be, Kind of, you know, they're not going to be affected that much. The purchasing power, I mean, in terms of for the yeah. China. Also, also, Stelio, though, don't forget that um, they they use a lot of materials that they don't have on their own, so they do have to buy with their currency. Yeah, like yeah. Well, yeah. that's well, that's yeah, that that's the thing. I would say, you know, maybe some copper or maybe you know energy products uh, and then a few other things. But yes. Just uh, looking at that one really chart, like guys, I, I just want to bring it up before I forget. Uh, when Jamie was on, you know, he featured that, uh, the one, and he had a level, I, I remember, uh, he was looking for potential shorts up here around 691. Just, th I thought I'd throw it out there. Oh, well, you know, um, I'm, I don't, I, I'd be hard, for, I'd be yeah, I know. very interested to see if he would be standing in the, in the way of this move right now. Yeah. Um, just saying. And, I know. Uh, it looked, yeah, but but it, I I didn't watch the interview. I didn't get an opportunity to go back and watch the interview. It is sure. seventy eight six back there too. So right. anyway, I yeah, know. we're we're what, we're what different. Right you could throw your charts away in this kind of environment sometimes. Exactly. That's what you're saying, that's, right? That's a great that's a great point, Dale. When you start getting into these types of environments, your technicals become a lot less effective, and that's where the macro. Uh, point of view becomes much more effective in my in my view. You kind of have to toss out the charts with the, the you know unless you're looking at it from a target standpoint, from a fade standpoint, you kind of throw that out with the bathwater. So, um, but anyway, uh, good morning, Steve and Stelios. Good morning, Thanks, thank you guys for being here. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass you over yeah. the charts and I'm gonna get uh, get hopping. I'm gonna try to fade some of this dollar yen on on rallies. So. Uh, good luck to all of you guys, and make sure you you uh, you t you uh, uh, take a look at Force Park FX, our webinar sponsor. Especially for those of you that don't get rebates or are or, or, or trying to uh, get into forex analytics on a, on a reduced cost, you can join our reimbursement program. So, uh, thanks for thanks for listening in, and I'm going to pass you over to my colleagues. One thing is for sure, uh, Blake, we are probably going to have a, an interesting week, and after several weeks that we had like zero volatility and the boring environment. I think it's, it's going to get interesting. Yes, I it's hope so. Thing. Yep. Thanks, guys. Enjoy. Thank Bye -bye. you, Blake. Uh, Steve, uh, on the subject of China, have? there's nothing else really, just China. <laughs> but yeah, on that subject, <laughs> there, there's, there's two things that I, um, I wanted to point out. First, one thing that we were talking about on this webinar on Friday, and um, Larry Kudlow actually um, went on an interview, I think on Fox News, and he said that uh, he admitted that these tariffs are going to be mostly uh, paid effectively by the US consumer. He did say, you know, he mostly? said both sides. 
Yeah, yeah. It, well, it, both sides are going to get hurt. Sir. Sorry, wait a second. Are there tariffs that you actually send the bill to the exporter? Because I've never well, seen such tariffs. Theoretically, the exporter might lower the price to com somewhat to compensate for that, but you know how it works. It's going to be mostly borne by the. Uh, yeah, the uh, yeah, and, and and keep in mind, Stelio, that the vast majority, not all, but at least you know from the consumer side, the vast majority of the uh, uh, imported stuff are low margin. Uh, stuff, right? Yes. Um, so, so I doubt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and given that we already had tariffs and we just increased, you know, uh, the U.S. just increased percentage on the, the vast majority of them, um, at least. I think that if if there was to to be some kind of an adjustment like that, it had already happened. Yeah. Uh, the other the other thing which actually we were talking about before this announcement. Um, uh, came out was that uh, you know chi Chinese I can't remember which official it was but one of the Chinese uh, came out and said uh, that um, uh, in response to these tariffs said look you know this is what's happening on the U.S. side we can um, you know it looks like these uh, negotiations are going to go to a stalemate and if that happens it's going to be a game of patience and we can our government will ensure that we come out the winners and you know the power that uh, the Chinese have in that respect, and the and the um, you know the government. So uh, that was interesting. But now there's another headline that just coming out just a few couple of minutes ago, which actually says that China is to raise tariffs on tariffs on part of 60 billion of goods of U.S. goods. So what's that part? We don't know. So it's a bit. Uh, it's a bit. Um, that is a damn good question. <laughs> it's a hazy. It could be a one percent of them. It could be a hundred percent of them. So let's see what what it actually comes out to be. But for the moment, that one thing's for sure: equities are hating it, and quite right. Of course, so. yeah, of course. Yeah. And, and and keep in mind, we had we 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 said that many many times before. Yeah. They, and, and, they kept yeah. ramping up yeah. stocks with the rumors of you know an upcoming China deal. Uh, this, that, you know, it, there was a one-way street after that because there were two scenarios, in my opinion. We either had a breakdown of the of the conversation and the negotiations, which would be, you know, stock negative, or on the other hand, we had a deal which I never expected the deal to be really great. So the market would then, uh, you know, uh, do the usual, which is we would have a situation of uh, buying the rumor and selling the news because. Once a deal came out that wasn't good enough, then the market would sell off. And perhaps I'm assuming that one of the reasons that Trump is, uh, you know, much uh, harder on negotiating this is that perhaps whatever they could agree on wasn't enough for the market to be satisfied with. So um, knowing that um, Trump thrives on uh, conflict and, you know, his, uh, his voter base is also uh, people that, you know, are absolutely fine with you know, Trump uh, being um, hard on negotiations. I think that... Till they, till they go to Walmart in a few months, Steve. Yeah, that's a different story. I think that they would also... You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you'll, back, you'll back all the tough rhetoric and actions until it affects your wallet. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's true, actually. That's true. Now, um, this is the level you were talking about, Coach, because I have the exact same horizontal support resistance uh, area here in the 78.6. So yes, we are testing now uh, this yeah. confluence of resistances. Now, do I think that we're going to stop here? No, I really don't think it's easy. Can we pull back from here? Yeah, we can. But uh, from a technical perspective, I would It looks like we're going to new highs. Yes, yes. I yeah. would expect that this would lead to new highs even temporarily. You know what I mean? Right. Because you know this move was corrective uh, yeah. in nature, uh, undoubtedly. I mean, all, it had all the characteristics of a correction. Just look at the daily RSI at the moment; it's hitting like 81 plus. So you know, no sign here that this is a high. Now, if you want to scalp it short, is this the place you you would scalp it short? Yeah, sure it is. Uh, but keep in mind that you're definitely going counter trend here. Uh, in my opinion, as long as we remain above this. Uh, unfilled gap at 6.75. Trend is your friend, and, and the trend is clearly higher at the moment to, to close the whole uh, Chinese yuan uh, conversation so we can see other things affected. Now, if I go back to the indices, um, you know, uh, really moving attempts uh, for, from this market for four consecutive days 
Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, in every single occasion, especially Friday and Thursday, the market uh, dumped way below this uh, 280, uh, 2860, 2870 horizontal support area. And every single time they managed to recover the market enough uh, for the daily close to be within or above that area. Uh, given though uh, the outcome, it would have been impossible for them to hold it for a fifth consecutive day. I very, very much doubt that today they will be able to make it, you know, recover uh, to at least reclaim this area on a daily closing basis, uh, no matter how much they try, unless, you know, some some kind of news come out that are completely contradicting, you know, what we've heard so far, which means that, you know, the next support area down here at 2800, 2805 uh, is, is the next one to come. And perhaps even you know lower than that. I'm I'm still short the uh, S and P, so I pro I as you understand have a, absolutely no problem with that. Now, if you have a look at the VIX before we go to um, to a few more indices, the VIX came back, retested this horizontal support resistance area as support. Keep in mind that we have broken out from this uh, descending trend line uh, resistance, and you know it's already like 25% higher on the day. It's above 20 at the moment. I think that you know this is a good time for us to make it to this target that we had all along, um, 25 to 26. I think VIX can can really uh, hit the target. Now the DAX is obviously zooming lower with what happened. Uh, even if this is a simple ABC, we had discussed about that. Um, I think that all eyes are now uh, focused on the 11,800 area. Multiple, multiple confluence of, uh, confluences of support here. Um, a, a one confluence of multiple supports to be, uh, you know, exact. Uh, keep in mind that this area was also the neckline of this head, this huge head and shoulders formation. Acted multiple times as, as support. Once we broke uh, below it, it acted a couple of times as resistance. So why not? It might act as support once again. Um, so. I wouldn't advocate for somebody to be selling the DAX, uh, you know, close to that level. But keep in mind that if we break below it again, that's going to open up uh, the downside once again. And, you know, then interpretations can even uh, be, uh, you know, easily targeting new lows. I mean, new lows below uh, that 10,000 something low. Now, uh, FTSE at the same time, breaking below, as you see, perfect tunnel here um we broke below it we you know we kept testing resistance previous support as resistance for three four uh days uh we, finally today we seem to be uh really you know going on uh, to the downside once again um next area of support 7090 below that quite a lot of more downside coming uh nikkei is one of the charts i showed today earlier in the chat room Keep in mind that this 21,000 area, the one we're currently testing, is a strong area of support resistance. You can see it in the past. Uh, I expected such a move here. Uh, now, if we even break below 21,000, I think there's more uh, downside coming, of course, with you know equivalent Im implications to uh, the yen and to the USD yen, um, obviously. NASDAQ breaking through um, this 7,000. 480 uh, support. So next target here is uh, roughly at 700, uh, 7,300. So another 100 handles to the downside easily. Keep in mind that from a technical perspective, ascending wedges uh, call once broken for a retest of the bottom of the wedge, which, for example, in the case of the NASDAQ, that would point down to a move towards 7,000, a little bit lower than 7,000. And in the case of the S&P, that would call for a move down towards uh, 2,735. So, uh, you know, if those wedges are to play out to, it, to their targets, that would call for quite a lot more downside. Uh, and, you know, forgot to mention it, I, I consider it, you know, uh, an, you know, an obvious fact from a technical perspective. I know that we also on occasion have some, un some amateurs listening in. Obviously, strong areas of support like the ones I mentioned should act as a resistance if retested. So um, I, I consider any retest of this 
area of previous support, uh, very likely to act as resistance and a good level to, show, to sell against if that happens. Uh, same deal here with the NASDAQ. Um, I'm talking about this area, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, now, um, let me also show here we had the Shanghai uh, Composite Index. I think we're going to gap down uh, tomorrow. Obviously, keep in mind we, you know, bro we broke hard here. Nifty false breakout there. Uh, big move to the downside. We even had a head and shoulders formation top. We've already uh, actually. Uh, completed that target, so it doesn't really matter. Keep in mind, um, we're about to retest confluence of supports here at the 61. Uh, actually, I have to redraw it. Uh, okay, there it is. So there we are, and 38.2 as well. There it is. Okay, so 38.2 here, a little bit lower. We have this high. Um, so, you know, we might find like temporarily support here, but this move lower looks impulsive. So it has to be at least the first leg of a deeper correction, in which case I would expect a continuation lower for at least a deeper correction from here, one way or another. So a sell on rallies as well. Bank Nifty broke below this rectangle support. So an extension would target lower anyhow. Uh, so everything is underway. The FXI was toying around with this previous trend line resistance in this case, um, uh, support this case acting as resistance. Uh, no, sorry, oppositely. Uh, resistance this, in this case acting as support. I think we're going to break below it. And, you know, next area of interest is actually down here, previous confluence of supports, roughly at 38. And needless to say, break below that is a very, very bearish development. You can see why if I zoom out. Uh, we would then target again quite low, you know, quite a lot lower. Um, you can see this whole, you can actually interpret this whole recovery you know, as an ascending wedge. There it is. So, like this, okay. So, not a big surprise if we actually move uh, even to new lows from there, uh, you know, especially if the situation keeps escalating. Emerging market, more or less same situation. You can see our side divergence here on the daily was quite uh, obvious. Um, rejection from, uh, you know, well-defined horizontal resistance area. And we broke below the wedge and, you know, we are going lower. So everything is pointing lower. Now, having to do with the USD yen, I need to remind you of one thing here. And this is the fact that the USD yen has been trading for years within this symmetrical triangle, which means two things. First of all, this uh, triangle's support might act as a magnet, especially now that we're under pressure. Uh, it currently passes from 108, 108, 20. Uh, given of, of what's happening, it's very likely that we're going to make it there. Um, now, shorting against that level is ill-advised, obviously. Uh, but one thing is for sure, if for any reason, we break, we break below that level, we break below 108. That's going to be a major, major bearish development. And I think in that case, we're going to see some big, big market move to the downside. I bet a lot of stop losses are there. I bet a lot of fresh positions are going to be initiated there. And, you know, it, it's, it's going to be hell breaking loose, probably from a technical perspective. If we break below that, we, we've done it already once, but that was, you know, in a situation that we in essence had like a flash crash move. It, it lasted like for a few minutes and then we uh, we recovered. But if we do close on a daily closing basis below that, there's going to be a lot of investors looking at this chart and going like, hmm, I should definitely not be long this pair anymore. And that on its own should, uh, you know, should produce quite a big move. Now, Costas was right, again, and I'm totally in agreement with him. We've been seeing this today, this big divergence between crude and what's happening in the S&P. Uh, so a comment here uh, on the daily, and then we can go back on the four-hour chart. Um, Costas is, is claiming that that's one of their way to try to support the S&P, and that might as well be that. 
or those rumors, you know, about an attack um, or whatever else. Um, now, um, we've had a very interesting week last week because you don't see that happening frequently. You can see it here. We had, oops, sorry, wrong chart here. We've had like four inside days, and usually when that happens, uh, and you then get a breakout, um, you know, you, you you should expect continuation. So, um, I do think that if we close outside the range of the first day before the previous inside days, which was this one, 6th of May, uh, we tested its range highs today, but so far we haven't broken uh, outside of it. Um, I think it's going to be a bullish development. And one way or another, from a technical perspective, that would point to a larger recovery in, in crude. I'm still, I'm still short. I've only taken profits of, of one third of my position, but I intend to take profits of, on another third of my position if we actually close, uh, as I wrote in the chat room earlier today, above 62.75. Uh, today, so I'm I'm not going to do something intraday. Um, so you know that's that's how the situation is with with crude now. Uh, gold is testing resistance at the moment. So somebody would would probably expect gold to um, to be more uh, appreciated, you know, today uh, and on Friday, given uh, the whole U.S. China. Uh, mess, but I have to say that uh, you know the the bid that we're seeing here is extremely underwhelming. Regardless, we're currently testing you know major uh, technical resistance. So let's see what happens from here. Keep, keep in mind this is the confluence of this descending trend line and the 50 DMA. You can't actually see it because it's exactly exactly on top of this trend line. So um, if we break above this. Area, I think you know there are good chances that gold is going to finally accelerate higher, perhaps even make it to 1360. Silver, silver doesn't really uh, seem to care at all about it. Doesn't, yeah, to be honest, it's it's never appreciated anyhow as a fly to uh, safety, uh, safe haven medal or whatever. But I would have expected you know um, it to hold better. Regardless, it, it still remains within this descending wedge. So, you know, nothing really to do as long as we're within it. The fact that, you know, gold is uh, doing better um, is also what has brought the gold-silver ratio very, very, very close to multi-year trend line resistance. You can see it here. Okay, so gold-silver ratio looks quite strong. Uh, and, you know, it's approaching this 88, 88.50 area. Uh, let's see what happens from there. It's going to be very interesting if we actually break out from there. That's going to be a very bullish uh, development with, you know, short to medium term implications at the very least. Palladium is holding quite okay, given, you know, uh, platinum, I mean, of uh, what's happening. And palladium, same deal here, as you can see. Uh, we, we still remain below this uh previous channel but you know we've had a big recovery on friday and we've retraced only part of it uh copper of course is suffering given the whole situation but keep in mind so far we've we've tested but not broken below this horizontal support area 272 uh i'm paying close attention to it if we do break below it then uh this opens the door for another move towards 256 257 uh previous rectangle support you can see how important this area is um, one step at a time. Let's see if we can break below the support. Uh, China to raise tariffs on part of, yep, uh, we read that. Uh, Bloomberg had already said that in the article, they're just playing everyone. Um, finally, somebody speaks about the gap. Thank you, Steve. Uh, my, my pleasure, Oli. Uh, Steve used this Swiss, has strong broken support at 101. Looks like 99 is a good target. Yeah, thank you for reminding me. Let's have a look at the Euro Swiss first, since we know it's, you know, the Swiss is acting like a safe haven, uh, you know, very frequently. And indeed, we are, you know, pushing lower. But, you know, in looking at the bigger picture, no real thing has happened here. We still maintain this range, uh, which is like trading between 114.50 
and 11180 okay so you know range trading to uh, you know uh, to resume <laughs> at least in in, uh, in the near future because we we are some distance from support and yes use the swiss is now pushing strongly lower this more or less invalidates the possibility that this was a bull flag or a pennant uh, opens the door that this move higher was a false break higher still we haven't actually registered a lower um, low. Uh, we still have a sequence of uh, higher lows. Um, I view this zone as the first area of support, 1003. And after that, we have the 99 cents previous low. I agree with you, which would coincide in this case if it happens quite fast with this ascending trend line support. In my opinion, having to do with the trend, this ascending trend line is the most important one, right? Because it, in essence, defines the subtrend because it passes through all the higher lows. So, yes, 99 cents, an area of interest. And I do believe that if we break below 99 cents, that's going to be a very bearish development and it should produce uh, more downside. Until that happens, we're in the middle of that range. Um, yeah, of course, given of what's happening at the moment, I understand why somebody would want to be short, but personally, you know, I don't want to have any uh, position here. Now, let's have a look at the DXY in isolation. And as you see, the DXY is pushing lower. But as we saw with the USD Swiss, is this uptrend broken? No, it isn't. Because this ascending trend line support is still holding. And, you know, where would we invalidate that uh, view? At a move below 96.75, this previous low, also currently more or less where this ascending trend line uh, support passes from. So 96.75, a very important level in my opinion. And the one uh, after that, 96.30, uh, if we break through those two zones, I think that the DXY is gonna be in real trouble and we might see a much, much bigger move to the downside. I know a lot of people, Blake included, uh, were jumping the gun Thinking that, thinking that the euro USD might be a good buy here simply because we've had the first elements of what we want to you want to see before buying something, which is a slowdown in momentum, right? So undoubtedly, the bearish momentum here in the euro USD was slowing for quite some time. Would I be long here? No, not until we break above 113. So 113 confluence of this descending trend line and resistance and this horizontal support resistance area um i don't want to be doing anything until we break above that now once we break above that uh 113 113 20 i think that the ball will start rolling and i think we should see an acceleration to the upside and uh given that the market was quite bearish the euro i think that we might see um you know this move to the upside actually uh, gaining momentum and uh, you know, becoming something more uh, important than uh, perhaps some some people expect at the moment. Now, um, going back to what uh, which pairs are theoretically speaking mostly affected, but by, by what's happening at the moment, theoretically speaking, that should be the Aussie and the Kiwi crosses uh, having to do with the Aussie against the USD. Very underwhelming reaction. I mean. We're still above the 61.8, so not what you, you would expect to see here. And the same situation with the Kiwi. In fact, I would understand why somebody would view this as a potential bullish opportunity once we break out from this formation. Now, would you be buying it with what's happening in uh, with uh, US and China? No, but you know, if you see some kind of a resolution. You know, given that it's been behaving very well, yeah, sure, why not? Also, again, uh, you know, responding quite strongly to the downside, but this is mostly due to what's happening in the uh, yen and not what's happening with the Aussie. You know, regardless, uh, we expected a continuation lower once we broke below this um, intermittent trend line. It was a parallel of that, that one. Um, and I do think that the, you know this this move can easily extend to the 61.8 percent fib at 74.45. Kiwi yen also attempting to break below a horizontal 
the confluence of a horizontal support uh, zone and the 61.8, as you see, this area had acted as support once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, considering last week we tested it multiple times. So if we actually manage to close on a daily closing basis below it, then we should be looking for more weakness towards this uh, flash crash low at 69.40. Uh, question about the Aussie uh, Swiss. Okay, I have no idea when is the last time I had a look at that. Actually, now we can see when. When we were trading in this triangle, I expected a break higher and the continuation. We did that. We did get that. Uh, but now we reversed once again. So um, I would have to say that we're probably in a larger... Triangle here. Now, if we decide to ignore this flash crash, which I usually do when a move happens like this, that might be. The formation you should be looking for. OK, so. I think we can easily make it back to retest this uh, trend line and support. And if we break below it, then more weakness to come. Uh, Euro TRY looks very bullish to me. <laughs> no doubt there. I mean, the situation with the Turkish Lira has started escalating more and more. You can see that despite probably that was an intervention on Friday, we've already retraced a big part of it. The six area acted as support. So if we have a look at the Euro TRY, there it is. And, you know, yes, it's, I mean, you know, we've been retracing more and more of the previous move. So, yeah, but keep in mind, it's very, very expensive to be the short of Turkish Lira. Okay, very expensive. So you have to take that into consideration. Um, let's see if I missed any of the questions. Coach, do we have an interview today, by the way? Soya beans. Okay, question about the soya beans. Sure. Uh, S1. Let's see. Oh, holy smokes. First of all, the breakdown. Uh, I should start trading commodities because you've seen commodities, some opportunities that are so so obvious i mean look at this formation from a technical perspective there isn't the cleanest technical formation that you should expect to trade right i mean this is textbook textbook corrective move higher i mean impulsive move lower and the textbook textbook panel here let's see if it even not that i really care about it to be honest but let's see if it even confluence with some kind of a big fib no, it didn't, but as I said, completely unimportant to me because just by looking at this chart, this formation was so textbook corrective. So, uh, you know, if, even, if you, even if you wanted to be more conservative with this move, even if you want to be more conservative and ignore this little spike here and waited for this breakdown as confirmation, you would still catch an amazing opportunity to the downside. Um, so what do I think about soya beans? Listen, if it wasn't a commodity, right? If this was a stock, I would say a lot lower. But knowing that it is a you know a hard commodity, which means that it has production costs, uh, real demand. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. I think it it still has room to move to the downside. It. I mean, we just broke the new lows from this formation, so I would definitely expect an extension. And where would I expect this to extend? I think that you know here you just need to employ some fib extensions and look at possible targets. Let's see.
There you go. 127% extension, 776, uh, 161.8, 733. Confluence with anything of interest. Ah, 766 is this high. Also some consolidation here. This low is also of interest. Remember the war chant, beans in the teens? You know, it had never done that. You know, it had been to 12 bucks many times if you pull up like uh, weekly or monthly. And we did. We had uh, beans in the teens. And I, I have to think, Steve, that uh, these ags are going to be fantastic buying opportunities. Oh, you can't, you with, can't eat, you can't without, eat gold. Without a doubt. One bad with weather that. year, El Nino's percolating out there. So, you know, I still have my commodity roots and Chicago roots. And I just have to think there's going to be. Uh, without a doubt. Yeah. And, and don't, don't, don't forget that always, always keep in mind that even from a mathematical perspective, um, uh, prices of commodities are not, uh, distributed uh, in a normal distribution. They always have fat tails to the right hand side, which yeah. means that usually when you get a big move or a big trend, it's all it's usually the upside at the end. You know what I mean? So yeah. uh, it pays to be long once the technicals start pointing there. But to begin yeah. with, for the time being, trying to buy soya Lower. beans here looks like trying to catch a yeah, like, like trying to catch a falling knife. Yeah, unless you know, complete... unless you like, you know, yeah, I agree with you. And you know, even when you think it's time, just for our uh, audience, uh, there are many contracts on beans instead of five thousand bushel contracts, which every one cent move is fifty bucks, so a one dollar move is five grand. They're like uh, one thousand bushel contracts at the mid am, so you could. Uh, you could do you like micro lots and FX. You could scale in with minis. Mm -hmm. Anyway, coach, do we have an interview today? Yeah, Adam's with us from Perfect. Macro Hedged. So uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I think for all our guests this week to talk about uh, the events that we have in front of our eyes. So thank you, Steve, for your roundup. And your your market roundup is better than any rodeo I've ever been to. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. <laughs> All right, buddy. So, Adam, I see you here. And welcome back to FACE. I'm going to make you the presenter. And what a wild day for you and I to be talking about trading in this environment. So, uh, you guys hear me okay? Yeah, got you, Adam. All right. I hear you. Cool. Welcome back to FACE, brother. Hey, right. well, thanks for having me back. How, how's everyone doing? Can you see? Uh, can you see my screen okay? Not yet. Oh, now we on. can. Now we can. Yeah. More than just price. Yes. I just I didn't know where you guys wanted what you wanted to do, where you want to go. I've got a potential trade that we've put out we can talk about. Um, okay. uh, uh, yeah. you're the you're the boss. All right, cool. Okay, so, so I mean, uh, wherever you want to go that you have conviction with and uh, whatever you want to communicate to our community, buddy, uh, I bring you back and give you discretion. You have power of attorney over the next uh, 30 minutes. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, cool. Um, so uh, just a little bit about us. I'm with, this is our second time uh, uh, talking with Dale, which is uh, cool. Thank you very much for having us back. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, I started off way, way, way back in the day uh, at Goldman's, um, which was 1995, four, something like that it was. Uh, and I left there in 2002, uh, sorry, 2004. And uh, I've been uh, sailing solo uh, from, from that from that point onwards, uh, running a small market making business, uh, predominantly in the CME uh, or NYMEX, obviously before the CME bought it. Um, but after that, uh, on oil products, uh, Arbob, uh, uh, heating oil or diesel, um, and uh, more recently kind of dabbled into other things as well. But the, the backbone is, is, is the oil space. Uh, so it's it interesting. Of, You're the guy to ask then because, uh, you know, last week when the S&Ps were under pressure and there ha had been, especially until today, pretty tight correlation between indexes and WTI. Uh, do you know what's behind the uh, WTI 
standing on its own in the face of risk off everywhere else what gave it the lift today uh i think well combination i mean we've had the the iranian okay. the american playing tough grain tough, tough on, on iran at the moment whilst those barrels have either been uh made up elsewhere um or iran's doing a very good job still of getting those barrels out onto the market whichever way whichever means they uh they feel appropriate they've got different relationships with different countries it's very hard to kind of truly stop them uh okay. i think in the US, the us the us lawmakers and uh, that are assessing these sanctions are doing a cracking job uh, attacking the companies that are potentially still working with iran but, but there's always going to be some some uh uh, some barrels leak out, but when when military, not action, but certainly military muscle is flexed, uh, it's it, 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 you know crude reacts. There's nothing you know. Yeah. You only have to look at any form of major oil producer and, and, and associate that with any form of uh, potential unrest. You know when when Russia uh, went into the Crimea, uh, it, you know oil exploded. The 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 Arab Spring oil exploded. You know, it's right. it, it's very sensitive to barrels off. Okay. Do you uh, buy the do you buy the ma- well? Uh, do you buy? The, sorry, go on. Do you buy the maxim that you should never short oil on Friday, Adam? No, I just not. Yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. All right. And, and, I figured. Any, any of these? I mean, there's you know you can you know there's I, I've seen huge kind of gap down opens on on Monday. It's it's you know, obviously there's there's some weekend risk and there's always there's always a bit of. Uh, you know, war, political risk, but right. the, guys short, the guys short in oil of the week on a Friday and coming back on a Monday probably made more money than those getting been long it. So, you know, it's just, it's always one of those facts. I think people are more worried about yeah. political unrest. They, there's, they're, there's they're, some panel covering the top of your presentation, like a black rectangle uh, uh, square on top. Do you see that? Right, hold on one sec. Is that gone away now? Thank you, Blake. Uh, no. Uh, hold on, hold on. Which, Maybe if, it it starts from the top there it's gone okay right. okay fine yeah it's just a pop-up so let me uh let me put my machine on to do not disturb uh where are we focus assist okay cool that'll make it all go away now right okay yeah Thank so you. one of the other things as well is very sensitive and people whilst libya is not really a massive uh producer they have a, a lot of ver- they bear the sensitivity to changes in Libya is actually quite profound on the oil market. Normally, around the fact that their barrels are readily available, their oils very very versatile into many refineries. Okay, um, gotcha. You know, right. so that's, that's that's always an interesting thing. I mean, if, you know, kind of this this whole energy independence thing for the U.S. is always an interesting concept because you know there's there's a, there's most of the refiners in the US require Arabian oil and many of the refiners in Europe require US oil. So there's, there's a natural shipping demand always happening and a natural import export demand always happening. So unless someone's prepared to invest the, I won't say hundreds of billions, but certainly tens of billions of dollars in, in, in refinery replacements that is going, that needs to go on in the US market. We, uh, uh, you know, that, 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 uh, uh, that, that play will always still be going on. Yeah, the energy independence uh, is lacking refining capacity yeah, yeah. here. That's a pearl. Thank you, Adam. No worries. Um, okay, so uh, what was I? So yeah, we, we, we've the macro hedge. We've got three products out. So one is our options, our flagship. I'll, I'll go through a, a trade that we put out recently of that. The directional, which is for those kind of not really um, trading options, but want our kind of directional turn points. The other one is uh, our new intelligence. We had a lot of people ask questions about how does it all work and how does it all get put together. So one of the things that I wanted to do was ensure that we we didn't give away our our secrets per se, but we also uh, give some explanations to the background as to how we uh, work a trade, work a strategy. And I was just going to talk everyone through that today so they can actually okay. see it. Come piece together and put together. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I won't, I won't dwell too much on these next slides because we've already done them. If anyone wants a copy of this, just ping me and I'll just I'll, I'll put this on the, on share. Um, uh, an interesting uh, slide we've got here, which is uh, 
Uh, I've cut away the right-hand side axis to, to, to uh, so no one can see what what price chart this is. But um, I we gave this to uh, someone to do some technical analysis on, and it's kind of spent a lot of time looking here. You can see the retra the Fibonacci retracements, the uh, the touch points, the reverse head and shoulders, the breakouts. And one of the things we wanted to kind of just say was just we we built micro hedged intelligence to 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 enable traders to have something else to rely on that wasn't price action wasn't charts because we need to be looking at what's happening to true value uh mm -hmm. because when we release to this trader that basically we just use a random number generator off MathWorks for that chart okay even though it was absolutely adamant that you know the the chart was predicting these prices and this was about to uh, you know this trend line was going to break it was just we used a random stream class to, to uh produce that and import it into a chart so this whilst we're you know we understand that there's a lot of technical analysis out there in the world we we wanted to, to enable our customers to see something that showed uh, not not necessarily an opposing side, but something that that says there there are there are other factors at, at work that's going on uh, that's worth looking at. Okay. Okay. So what have we built? Um, the uh, so we we run th uh, four models to to a compressed together. So our macro hedge market metrics, which is our uh, trend and range model, macro hedge implied vol. That's our proprietary volatility model. It's actually the model I use for market making the crude. We've just rolled that out and, and indexerized it. Um, and uh, macro hedged uh, turn, which is basically our uh, oversold, undersold. So our, we're looking at, this is our core model. We're looking at how SKU is impacting uh, uh, the, the pressure on the market, which will, which will fall predict the turn points. And I'll show you how that works now. Um, okay. So this is what the users see. There's a free trial on this of five days for everyone. Um, and you see, so if we look at kind of the S&P 500, because the next example is the S&P 500, uh, where the market trends, it was, whether it's in bullish mode, neutral mode, or um, a bearish mode, what the implied vol is in relation to uh, the last, uh, uh, annualized over the last year, whether it's cheap or rich. But the key ones to kind of look at are the turn models. So you, you see as an example that, that there, uh, uh, the call turns incredibly cheap and even the put turns on, uh, uh, on S&P 500 are, are fairly cheap as well. This was, uh, this, was this morning. So this is, uh, we've not really seen that, that leg up in puts, but that was arguably because of the, the rally we saw Friday in the S&P 500. But if we go to this next slide, we can start to see how it can impact someone's trading. You know, we're, we're not about intraday trading. Um, we're, we're all about how can we, how can we assist somebody to, to get, make a gain over a longer period of time? That longer period of time could be we try and analyze over a year or quarter on quarter. But we've got a lot of day traders, technical analysis guys that use us to kind of assist their trading. Somebody gave us the best compliment ever a few weeks back. He said, you guys are the sanity to my insane trading. And uh, if, you know, if we can, if we can, you know, if the if the strategies we're selecting can bring, you know bring you revenue that you can offset against your learning curve, then then that's brilliant. So if we look here um, at what's going on, we've mapped back our model back into Bloomberg because to try and visualize to help people kind of see what we're doing and what we're looking at. So if we look at the very the, the far left hand side. Uh, uh, our red arrow. It's just predicting that our um, trend model turned. Now, our trend model is always going to be slightly late, but it turned pretty well in for the S&P 500 last year. But that's that to me personally is not a, a, a great source of, of high probability profits, and that's what we're about. But if we move over to kind of early November, you can see. Uh, our put turns and our, sorry, our put turns were starting to to, to completely wane, and, and our call, and our call turns were spiking, and th and they our, our model will depict a, a, a point when everyone's overblown, and you can see the key things here are those three those three spikes. The first one was absolutely perfectly timed. The second one was a little bit early. It was one, two, three, three days early. And the fourth one was, was well-timed because whilst we all thought the bottom was potentially in, it did another 
300 handles further south. So that's that. That's where this becomes of, of great value to to any to any day trader or anyone looking over a week's time horizon or a two weeks time horizon, where we we will signal uh, when our, when our models physically seeing these skews being manipulated, where the large money is coming in and absorbing everything for a turn point, uh, and that's that that's something that uh, it, you know we've we've now mapped out visually. If I move over. Uh, where are we now? So this is this is the sterling. There's another interesting one here. If we look onto the the, the right here, you'll see that the the, the call values uh, around the uh, Brexit uh, um, votes were absolutely flatlined to zero, and there is just there is just you know everyone was expecting um, f you know every, uh, the uh, further selling in sterling, but there was it was to the point where it was so cheap. You could have funded long positions for free, and lo and behold, okay. look what happened. All we had was uh, a, mo a move up from uh, from 128 all the way up to you know 400 points all the way up. And you could have funded was, them for free by uh, writing options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, they, they right. were, that, the, the like calls, a risk reversal, where you're yeah. long a call and you sell puts and it covers it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, okay. they were. It was it was so cheap in our model. It, it was just ridiculous. Even if you were wrong, you wouldn't have you would have lost a couple of ticks because it was just. It, the, the, this is what I'll show you, kind of coming up in the next example, is the, this. Well, what we're looking here is for predictable value, and the market was so sure. Everyone was waiting, in, thinking the votes weren't going to pass and the world was going to end, and lo and behold, bang, up we go, um, 300, 400 points. And a similar thing happened. You can see uh, late March, April, uh, April time, where the calls just again the same thing. Everyone thought Sterling was going to do fantastic, and you know Brexit's been delayed. Calls went to 100 or 1.0 in our index, and then you see that little spike there in the puts of the second arrow, and that's that's money moving in. And then you know there was a around 133. We've just come off now 300 points from 133. It's looking at that. When someone makes a large trade in the outright, they're impacting that outright for that moment. When someone makes a large trade in options, they, they're impacting the entire skew. So every single level, there, that, that wing moving from the at the money is right the way out to the five deltas. Someone's physically got to smash everything. That's true money coming in and moving. And, and that's, that's what we're riding with as well. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so, oops, sorry, that's a... Off slide. So, oh, and that shouldn't say what have we built. That should say uh, uh, this is a trade. <laughs> um, okay. So we um, using that same ethos, the same model. We looked at the ten-year notes, and you can see, you know, since the Federal Reserve came out incredibly uh, dovish in their December uh, meeting. Um, we've seen nothing but buyers of bonds, and the whole world thinks that the U.S. markets. Uh, done and um, you know where the recession's coming and there's going to be no more rate rate rises if anything there's going to be rate cuts well what we've got ourselves here in the bond market is the same thing that we've kind of had back in that, that sterling market that I was talking about and also in the s ps uh, back in October November last year where we're so weighted to um, uh, interest rate cuts that there are any any tone change over the next few months that's a hawkish tone change to but by the federal reserve we'll see an incredible snap back and what we can even look at these are things that don't move that much so just to highlight the point of where we were back in november and where we are um well this was friday um you can see that there's a nearly a 0.3 percent difference in the in the 25 delta puts of a of the of the 10 year now that's just in crude oil that would be a day's range in the 10 year massive she, these things don't move that way it, the, it, everyone is forecasting rate cuts no more a, a, and a bearish outlook for the us now if we have any movement to and we don't even need a rate increase or even stipulation that they're not going to get a rate cut just any hawkish tone that snaps back so how can we 
make profit from from a, that tone change. And so with a flight to quality going on today, is today a good time to execute that strategy? I mean, we haven't yeah. quite made new highs in the note. Yeah. We may, it, it would look like a three drive, but uh, you would start doing it on days where there's risk off and people coming into bonds, right, Adam? Absolutely. So we started okay. doing it. Uh, we started doing it on the eighth of uh, May. You can get it done today, a bit cheaper. Um, but you can look here is that you know the cost of this position is one tick. So you can wow. have a one. You can have a one by five uh, short ratio spread for one tick. So. If the market continues to go up, the Fed stay dovish. They cut interest rates again. America falls off a cliff economically. We lose a tick. But if we have Man. any if we have any movement to, for positivity, more hawkish tone, um, continuing success with results coming out of the U.S., this ramps into kind of crazy, crazy levels where. You know, we, we were the ten-year bonds were at 122 just five weeks, sorry, four weeks ago. Well, if we move back down to 122, you're up 400 ticks already on this. You mean from one pip to 400? Yeah, yeah, because everyone's just written off any potential uh, downside to, to U.S. Wow, bonds. I'm going to put some on. Yeah, so we we look for those kind of opportunities, you know, keep keep the risk very small for our customers. Uh, and uh, Real, listen, realistically, what's your target? What what would you where would you start ringing the register risking? Oh, one if, this, uh, if, this, if this if we you know if the bonds move down to kind of even one twenty two and a half, you know, you've got, you you would have made so much money on it, you can just throw out fifty percent of the position, okay, uh, and just have a free ride. Th this chart here just shows that. The uh, um, that, that they're uh, they're worth 2.1 ticks. They're actually worth 1.4 ticks. But you know, if we have a you know a move down in the bonds, a slow move down, you know, you can see this moves from zero um, all the way up to 1400. Well, we're not going to get up there. But if well, we if, if we got, if over the next 20 30 days, if this if this moves from nothing or one tick to 400, it's uh, it's an incredible uh, uh, rate of return. What's a spread bid offer on that option? Uh, you can do the spread is one tick wide, two thousand by one thousand six hundred. You can literally get as much done as you like. Okay, wow, fascinating. So it's trading one one two at the moment. You get you, uh, you, you do this. You could go in one and a half. Will they will they fill you if you went in between bid offer? You can't, go any, like you can't go any small. Yeah, you get filled straight away. I mean, you, okay. you can do as much as you want both sides. The, the, okay. That's that's the beauty of the bond market. You know, when they crush a strike, they crush a strike, and they do. <laughs> so right. when they, if they 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 operate in a way in which they're more than happy to chase something they've done wrong, whereas mm -hmm. crude, you'll we'll never get it that tight. The mini, you'll never get it that. No one's quite 100% sure. Bond market moved from kind of 99% sure to 1% sure, like very little in between sometimes. Yeah, that's so something you can I really. Yeah. You can really capture that. So that they're the you know using the intelligence panel, um, they're the kind of trades that we put out for the customers that you know where this 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 might not yield it, it might but you know for that kind of risk the rule that we are so, we're so geared, highly geared in our favour it's just it, it's crazy not to be putting those on. They're simple strategies you can park them and, and it's there to complement kind of day traders. We we've got customers now that. Of either open options accounts uh, and users just for kind of either to hedge against, um, so they'll they'll have an open position, but they'll be turning their day trading position with the with the natural hedging we're creating for them. Or where was the when's the expiration on this play? Uh, they don't expire until uh, late August, so you've got ages. Oh, that yeah, in this business, it's ages. Yeah, 70, you've got seventy eight days. So between okay. now. Between, let, let's let's say you know I'm not a big fan of keeping anything in the last 30 days. So you know let's 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 say we've got 55 days. You know between we've got two more Fed meetings. Anything hawkish, this pays big time. Man, I I, I rarely see a, a a setup like that. Uh, you know where the risk risk reward. I mean I, I've actually hit on like 10 bit. You know. 10 baggers, but you're talking about 400. So, uh, and that's a, that's astronomical. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. The gold trade was three ticks when I came on with you last. We, I thought, yeah. no, three three point eight. Um, and we, you know, we we sold we sold that was a that was sold that twenty two. So nice. you know, seven yeah. eight times seven eight times risk on that. We made right. hundred hundred and twenty grand on that. Nice, buddy. Yeah, but it is. It's just we spend our time looking for these opportunities. And you've got to stack them all up, and you kind of start acting a little bit like a, um, you know, venture capital money, seed money to venture capitalists. They 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 will spread their bets quite evenly. They'll have a guy that's going to be quite a regular kind of I know a service type business that you know that when you invest in that, it's just going to yield you five six percent a year. It's like buying a property. Then you've got right. a couple of crazy guys in, in their dad's garage that are either going to make you a billionaire or or, or go bankrupt. And you have to spread that portfolio, your mindset across all of those types of, of, of events. And that's what we do is we look for all of those types of events. We know the regular stuff that's always going to pay us. We know the stuff that might be a kind of a bit of a dice roll. But if it does, it's fantastic. And that's 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 the key because I think if you just sit there staring at whether or not, you know, the mini's going to go up or down, eventually, you know, the house wins and the casino will come and, you know, throw you out the front door and that's 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 what we're just trying to educate and show people that that's that's how they should be thinking and park these things and just just leave them there and and, and act everyone should be acting like they're their own venture fund manager interesting you know i'm, I'm rooting for you to beat the house and and bankrupt them. <laughs> so <laughs> I, <laughs> so adam uh, anything you wanted to wrap it with or you want to go to your website so people know how to uh, follow yeah, you yeah. and get involved Sure, sure. I mean, uh, you know, this is uh, just just jump onto Macro Hedged. Um, if you, you can, uh, you, there's a there's a there's a free there's a sign up uh, free trial on the on the uh, intelligence for five days. Um, you know, otherwise we keep everything super low price. I said to you before, Dale, this isn't about charging a thousand bucks a month. This is trying to get as many people as we can joining us. They're actually seeing that they can survive. They can they, they they can do this. It's not about kind of having to roll the dice every day and, and eventually you get caught out. It's, it's about you know what what can be that long term banker we working on the basis. You know I've been in this game for 24 years and you have as well. And you you can't roll the dice every day. You need you need you need you need to be around in five years time. And people don't think past that next five lot hit in the mini. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? That's what I was saying today. I asked people, have you been trading for four or five years and still doing it? And anyone who answered yes, I said, you're a survivor. Yeah. So yeah. so you're a survivor, my trading warrior brother. And wow, you know, great presentation again today. I really appreciate you stepping up and being with us today, Adam. Cheers, Dad. Much appreciated and a pleasure to be on as always. Good hunting and uh, may uh, the tenure uh, see... 3.25 like it did last year by 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 July. <laughs> if we say 3.25 by by uh, by yeah, July, yeah, that's, I think that's like 900 ticks that trade would make. So. Uh, yeah, I'll oh, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll fly over and meet you on your own personal <laughs> island and we'll have a yeah, drink yeah, to yeah, celebrate it. Okay, yeah. buddy. That'll be a beauty. All right, cheers, <laughs> Very much. All right, take it Bye. easy, everyone. That's Adam at Macro Hedged and. Uh, you should, at the minimum, follow him on Twitter and check out his website. That's a wrap for me, guys. Uh, you're very welcome, Hamid. Everyone have a great day, and I'll see everyone for Turnaround Tuesday. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Adios, Warriors. Thank you for hanging out.